Greetings and salutations, my wonderful people, it's Blade Jack from the Blade Jack channel. And as you can see, I'm in a new background, but I'm here with another video. Wait, top 25 worst enemies of all time in video games. So without further ado, we're going to cue the intro. So, with my top 25 bad guys in video games, I will not be talking about just basic enemies, but bosses as well. And this is mostly from my personal experiences in games, and spoilers for the games with campaigns and such. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's get straight into it. So, kicking off this list, we've got Jill Valentine from Resident Evil 5. Uh, me and my buddy Ethan played Resident Evil 5's campaign together. Uh, we got through majority of it, but there's this one point in the game where Chris and the other character, I think it's Sheva, yeah, Chris and Sheva, get to this temple, and you end up fighting both Wesker and Jill. Wesker buggers off, doing his own thing, then you're stuck fighting Jill, who is being controlled by this little nanobot that is strapped onto a chest and this fight was so long, brutal and grueling it took us about two or three attempts to even get it right <laughs> um, next we have the Mancubus Demon from Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal I would talk about the original Doom games but in those games, the Mancubus Demon isn't really that difficult whatsoever. I mean, I'm talking about Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal specifically because with this new rendition of one of the most least famous demons in the game, they basically just made him stronger and tougher. I know you got like the Barons of Hell, but those are actually a piece of piss once you actually take him down and once you use the right weaponry. Because on my first playthrough on both Doom and Doom Eternal, they basically just beefed up the guy. Up until when I turned hints on in Doom Eternal, it's like, oh yeah, just aim for the giant plasma cannons on his arms, which makes him inevitably weaker. So I thought, fuck that. It's pretty bad. Next, we have Ram from Gears of War. Uh, me and Ethan again played through the Gears of War Ultimate Edition campaign uh, together. Um, we got to this final boss in the game, Ram, and we just sucked ass. We spent nearly, well, not nearly, we spent over an hour trying to figure out how this boss actually works. We tried different tactics, we tried um, different weaponry that we can find, we tried collecting maxing out ammo, we we did everything we could up until we actually found out the method right at the end. And it took us about a few minutes to actually get that even done. Uh, next we have <clears throat> Corrupted Shinnok from Mortal Kombat X. Um, as a fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise, you know that uh, majority of the games is Liu Kang's story, not the next generation of fighters that we got coming up in future Mortal Kombat games. Because the whole thing about Shinnok, like, it's a multi-phase fight. Like, basic Shinnok, fair enough, I can deal with that. But then you've got corrupted Shinnok, they basically just doubled his strength, his speed, count he can counter your attacks so much easier. 
and the fact that you're playing one of the lower mid-tier characters, Cassie Cage. And the whole fight is just absolute bullshit, if you ask me. Like, actually attempt it yourself on all difficulties. Uh, the next, we have the Golden Shores final boss in Sea of Thieves. Uh, this was actually a real big challenge for me and Ethan. Uh, if you want to go, if you guys want to go check out Ethan, I'll put um, his Instagram name on the screen. And also I'll put a link in the description down below to his YouTube channel. So you guys can go check his channel out for his content. But yeah, me and Ethan spent about nearly two straight months doing the Golden Shores missions. Figuring it all out, going through all the traps, finding all the chests and secret items and stuff. But when we actually got to the Golden Shores, we spent ages trying to actually find the um, the main temple that you have to go into. You got loads of booby traps, loads of skeletons to fight. You've got to make sure you stock up on ammo for your weapons and make sure you have loads of food on you to recharge your health. By the time we got to the Golden Shores final boss. I can't remember what the name of it is. If anyone knows what the name of it is, just enlist it down in the comments down below. But anyway, we got to the final boss and we were up till about two, half two in the morning trying to solve this boss fight. <laughs> it was the most brutal boss fight I've actually ever played through <laughs> in any game to recent dates. But yeah, that's all I can say about the Golden... Like, if you have an Xbox One or a PC, download Sea of Thieves and try and do all the Golden Shores missions. I would highly recommend that you guys do it in at least a group of four. <laughs> like, three minimum, four highest, or if you can even get even more mates to play Sea of Thieves with you, the experience becomes way much easier <laughs> than it actually seems to be. Uh, next, Gideon Graves from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the video game. I know about the re-release, I'm going to talk about that for the 10th anniversary of Scott Pilgrim in my new segment video. But, um... <clears throat> yeah. I still have the Xbox 360 edition of the Scott Pilgrim game. I've played through most of it. I got to the final boss of Gideon. It's a multi-phase boss fight. I, when you get to about the second fit, I mean the start of level is hard enough as it is anyway. You're stuck on a normal elevator that's just falling down relentlessly and you've got piles of enemies falling towards you. You've got to fight them, then the elevator stops at random points. You've got either random fans that you can easily just punch out the way. Or to get down faster you've got to punch the four locks in the corners of the elevator. Or sometimes you got bowlers rolling down, which are even harder to avoid. But then when you actually get to the first Gideon boss fight, it's pretty difficult. Then you go into subspace, like onto the subspace highway. Then you find a giant version of Gideon with a with covered in red veins, and he has the faces of all the evil exes that you fought before. It's kind of like that. Um, evil green alien in um, Doctor Who, the one that touches people and when they get absorbed and their faces appear on its body. It's kind of like that, <laughs> but also you get Scott's, one of his main weapons from the game, the power of love, which then will be evolving into the power of self-respect. <laughs> Next we have the Hunters from Halo Reach. Just the Hunters from Halo Reach, because um, I first played Halo Reach when it came out back in 2010, slash 2011. And me, I was told by my friends at the time, if you want to play Halo Reach the best way, play on either Hard Mode or Legendary Mode. Me, being the retarded noob that I was, I got to the Sword Base mission, I got down to the car park, and I had no ammo, no grenades whatsoever. I had only the sprint power armor, well, power attachment to my armor. And I was surrounded by three, well, two or three hunters. 
which are an absolute pain to kill in most Halo games. Next, we have Virgil from Devil May Cry 3 and Devil May Cry 5. Um, in Devil May Cry 3, I'm just going to play this clip right here from a live stream on two guys playing it. Fuck, I couldn't jump Scum. after that one. And he's got that, and that is the end. Oh! God damn it! <laughs> That is what happens when you get your ass beaten by Virgil in Devil May Cry 3. In Devil May Cry 5, turns out in the campaign by the last two missions, well, more like the last four, five missions of the game, turns out that the character V was actually Virgil the whole time, except he was just split into his human half with the Yamato, which was its power. Oof, God. I spent months trying to beat Virgil in Devil May Cry 5. I only got around to beating him recently because I spent so much time away from it that I worked on playing other games in my spare time. Um, but the best method I had for it, because I was playing on medium through the whole time, uh, the best method I found was to farm the daily login golden orbs which I managed to do successfully. <laughs> That's all I can say about the Virgil boss fight, other than the fact that I'm not the biggest fan of the character in the Devil May Cry series. Next, we have Albert Wesker's final boss from Far Cry, not Far Cry, <laughs> Resident Evil 5. Um, me and my buddy Ethan were doing this again, this was another kind of, well, it was not as brutal as Jill's fight, but it was also kind of difficult in its own sense, can the fact that it was three or four phases through the whole fight, because you're stuck on what is basically the helicarrier from Avengers, trying to fight Wesker, who keeps matrixing his way across the whole area, and the only best weapon you can use against him is rocket launchers, and there's not that many in the actual area, irregardless of difficulty. Then you got a shitload of quick time events. Then you got the part where Chris and Sheva are split into two different sections. Sheva just has to run, while Chris has to punch a shitload of boulders out of his way. And I'm gonna play this actual recorded clip of me and Ethan playing um, Resident Evil 5 on Ethan landing the final hit. Because we ran out of ammo at this point and it was the fucking funniest thing ever. So here's the clip right now. And that's basically, and then after that, after you do the basic arena fight with Wesker, you got another short quick time event, then you just gotta shoot him in the face with a couple of RPGs actually killing him. And oh my god, it was awful. <laughs> Next, we have the Nazi Zombies from South Park, The Stick of Truth. As a fan of the South Park games, and I like playing my RPGs every now and then, the Nazi zombies are the worst part of the game. Like, yeah, you got like the average like encounter in the game. So, like, oh yeah, you're gonna encounter an enemy, you gotta fight them, yada yada yada. But then you've got the Nazi zombies. After you've had the casual encounter fight with them, like you do, pretty much like in Pokemon, for example. Um, with the Nazi zombies, after you defeat them, you wait a few seconds. They come back like off the ground. Then you gotta try and defeat them again which is awful, it is horrible, because there's no way actually where you can permanently defeat the zombies. Next, we have the warthogs slash pigs in Crash Bandicoot 1. Um, more, if you want to know what I'm on about, just check out the level Road to Nowhere. If you see that level, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. Next, the Armored Enemies from Far Cry 5. Um, me and Ethan, I got Ethan to play Far Cry 5. Me and him played the co-op campaign because it was the only 
part of Far Cry that I did not actually play. Um, we died more to the armored enemies than we did to like literally anything else in the game, including like animals and the bosses in the game. And for some reason, the armored enemies are actually more tougher than the bosses themselves, which to me makes very little sense. Next, we have Mr. Sinister from Deadpool. Uh, I do still own my copy of Deadpool on the Xbox 360. Um, the whole game is really fun to play, like don't get me wrong, on all difficulties it's so good. But when you get to the final boss to fight Mr. Sinister, you gotta fight three different versions of Sinister. And the boss fight on easy and normal is pretty difficult, but when you play it on hard mode, it's the biggest joke ever, like it's too easy when you play it on hard mode. Uh, next we have the Blood Letters from Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Uh, going back to playing this game on PC, this game it's great, especially when you add mods to it. Just watch the Russian Badger video of it if you want to get the basic summary of the game. But in the game you have like the basic orcs and squigs and gretchens in the game, which are easy enough to kill anyway because they're just a bunch. They just try to swarm you, and you can easily just melee your way out of it. But then you've got the Chaos Space Marines, which are tough, but you can easily defeat them with a certain amount of ammo, or like using something like the Vengeance Launcher or the Last Cannon. Then you've got the fucking Bloodletters. After you kill a, ca a few Chaos Cultists, they come back as Bloodletters, which makes them tougher than Space Marines. That's all I want to know about. That's all I want to just say about them. Next we've got the Synthetics from Aliens vs Predator 2010 and Alien Isolation. In Aliens vs Predator 2010, if you're playing in the Alien and the Predator campaign, they're somewhat easy to get by, but when you're playing as the Marine, they are a big pain in the ass to get to try and kill. But you blow off their legs with a shotgun, they'll still keep firing at you. You blow off their heads, they'll, st they'll still keep firing at you. And then after you do actually end up killing them, they send an electrical explosion around them, which does a stupid amount of damage to you. It's just unfair, really, if you ask me. Especially for the Marine campaign. Then you got the Black Spider Clan from Ninja Gaiden 2. The whole game's hard. Like, that's all I can say about the whole thing. Next, we have the Nobodies from Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, as much as I love the Kingdom Hearts main trilogy, fucking the first three or four hours in Kingdom Hearts 2 are the most boring thing ever. And this is like before you even get the Keyblade. And when you try to fight the nobodies, they become super difficult. Because all you got is a shitty little baseball bat and you're just like, yeah. Next, you have, we got the Hellhounds and the Water Demons from Buffy the Vampire Slayer on the original Xbox. And again, as you guys know, I'm a big, big Buffy fan. I'm a fan of the show and the comics. And of course I played the game because it was even in my top 100 favorite video games of all time. These basic enemies just became way too difficult, even for my taste. Next the spotlight enemies from The Darkness 2. Uh, as a comic, as someone that's read the Darkness comics, you would know how the actual powers of Jackie Estacado's Darkness energy works. All it is, it's just summoning demons and using them to kill you, but they only work in darkness. And the spotlight enemies basically just render you useless, so the best way is if you find them, Try and kill them before they even turn on the giant spotlight on their shoulders. Next, we have the Bat slash Medusa heads and the Bone Pillars from Castlevania. <laughs> I love the Castlevania series, hands down, but these are the arguably the worst enemy types in the original three Castlevania games. I mean, I've been playing the Anniversary Collection for days on end just to get past them and they are 
on I would put something like the imps on here, but you can easily outsmart those, put the bats and the medusa heads and the bone pillars, their pattern just changes rapidly. Next we have Zubat from just Pokemon in general. Zubat is literally my least fucking favourite Pokemon in the world. Because uh, leech life, and every time I try to go into a cave, Zubat's there. I just want to get a Onyx or a Steelix, but I'm stuck with a fucking Zubat. Next, we have Mr. X from the Resident Evil 2 remake. The PS1 version, easily you can deal with, but I'm playing Resident Evil 2 the remake at the moment in my spare time, and Mr. X is very unforgiving in the game. All I would say is just try and fight it, if you can. Next, we have the Gunpowder Skeletons from Sea of Thieves. Um, I've died so much to these, and with the new updates we've got at the moment, they've increased the blast radius of the gunpowder barrels. Just play Sea of Thieves for yourself and actually do that shit. Next, we have Frank from House Party. And yes, it's the guy that says, How's it going, dude? Staying away from the alcohol? Frank is just a bastard <laughs> in the game. Uh, the amount, I'm also playing House Party at the moment on Steam, and Frank is arguably the worst part of the game. I mean, yeah, I know you can fuck him in the game if you do if you play your cards right, but if you do anything relating to the alcohol or throw something at Frank. You have no choice but to restart the game, or restart to your last manual saved checkpoint. Because Frank is very unforgiving, he kills you in literally two punches. But if you guys wanna see House Party in full gameplay, just watch the game Grumps playthrough. Next, and finally, the Sand Shark from Blue Dragon. I have spent years trying to beat this, and only I know it's the first boss in the game, but still, I, it was way before I even played RPGs seriously. The Sand Shark is arguably the worst first boss fight I ever played in any game possible. And if you've played Blue Dragon yourselves, you definitely know what I'm talking about. So. Anyway, that was my top 25 worst enemies in video games to gate. Hope you liked it, and please tell me what your what your opinion is on what your the worst enemy you've dealt with in a video game, whether it be a boss or a basic enemy or both. I'm open to hear your opinions, and also go down the link just yeah the link in the description down below to go check out Ethan's channel. I'll put his Instagram name on the screen here. Also, don't forget to follow me on my socials, on my Twitter, on my Twitch, and on my Facebook page. All the links in the description are down there below. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and share on your social medias if you want to. And I will see you guys in the next video.